Hey friends, welcome to another rainy day here in North Carolina. Um, it's a beautiful time of year to be in the South, right? We get warm temperatures, everything's flushing out, you get green growth, and you also get very unpredictable weather. We are blessed in the South with a very uh, normal, consistent rain in the spring. And uh, yeah, this spring is absolutely no different. Yesterday, I planted the deck boxes in the rain by the way, it wasn't supposed to rain yesterday, but it did. And uh, so, so yesterday I got nice and wet out there, but I love it. We'll do a little, just give you a little overview right quick to let you see how it is holding up in the rain. And um, so yeah, this morning I was like, I just do not want to garden out in the rain again today. So we are going to put two containers together that I always have here on the back porch, which is an interesting spot in that it is one spot gets complete shade it is bright but it never gets direct sun and then the other spot does get some direct sun and it's like hot afternoon like a corner will get really hot sun on it um, and then it's in the shade so we're going to put two containers together today here on the back porch using some beautiful annuals that are going to give us loads of color now um if you are have the opportunity to garden in the rain and you don't mind getting wet, it is the perfect time really to garden. The plants will not ever know that they, um, I think we have a delivery because Brenna, the alarm is going off as I say, um, because the plants will never know um, that they have been moved and they adjust really well when you plant them in the rain. If you are going to um, maybe move a plant that's already established in your garden and you want to switch it around, it is a great time to do it. They will thrive when you can transplant in nice rainy weather. Now, of course, we're not talking about thunderstorms, people. We are talking about rain like this. This is a nice, gentle, steady rain. This is our view from the back porch. So the David Austins are blooming. I'm trying my hand at some geraniums. We'll see how that goes. Um, they're test trials, so we're going to see how we like them. Um, but the fountain is out there and everything is just so green and lush and beautiful here at really the end of April. Brenna does not care that it is raining. She is going for it for sure. So let me go ahead and give you just a quick update on, on the deck boxes. And then of course we went ahead and planted up the two hanging baskets that I have on my porch. These are the new Selenia yellow begonias. I know it may not be the best way to see them, but that is what those baskets are. There are three plants in there. And then I'm gonna show it to you without <laughs> coming out from underneath the porch. Here we have the deck boxes, right? Beautiful arrangement of annuals that are going to give me height. This is gonna completely fill in. Some of you may be looking and going, gosh, Jenny, you, you still have a ton of empty space. Yes, I do, because my growing season is extremely long. I will have these plants in here, um, you know, April till November, possibly. And so, yes, I need to give them room to breathe and to grow. I am absolutely loving this new Superbina. This will be introduced next year in 2024. Pink Cashmere, pairing it, of course, with my beloved Supertunia Mini Vista White. And then this is that Selenia yellow begonia um, that is in the hanging baskets. Nice, big, huge blooms on it. Anyway, I will link that video if you missed that. But what we're going to do today is we have two containers. They are like wrought iron troughs, I guess you would call them. Um, so let's, they're just right down here. I brought everything up on the porch so, <laughs> so that we can um, work and not get wet. So all of my supplies are up here. I've got my Proven Winners Potting Soil, my Black Gold Garden Compost that we will be using, and then these are the two troughs, I guess that you would call them. They've been sitting in our dry storage all winter long. That's why the um, cocoa liner has collapsed. That's not a problem. It'll fluff back up when I put soil in it. This one I got last year from Kinsman Garden Company. I always have Kinsman Garden Company linked in our videos because I use so many products from them. Love this planter and it will hold a good amount. I would say this is probably um, maybe 36 inches long and it is probably 12 to 14 inches deep. Gives you a rough idea on that. 
And then this other sweet little thing right here, I bought years and years and years ago um, at a local garden center that um, just recently went out of business, Fords in Gastonia. I grabbed it, it is wrought iron, and then I do have to replace a cocoa liner every couple of years. To give it a little refresh, I will come along and I did this last year and just got some great Rust-Oleum paint and just spray painted it. Um, but it fits perfectly in a little nook that I have, so we're going to plant that one as well. Yet another reason to go to your local garden center and find some beautiful things. My fertilizers. I've got my Proven Winners, the Continuous Plant Release Food. Biotone, we'll sprinkle a little bit, bit of that in the soil. And then we're going to plant the first, I think this might be my first caladiums of the season. Yep. So I'm not going to use all of these. I just grabbed a whole tray um, <laughs> at the garden center. Um, so this is Caribbean coral, and this is a strap leaf caladium. It is going to be for shade. So that means it can do a couple of hours of morning sun or filtered sun here and there, but not the hot afternoon sun. There are a ton of the heart to heart caladiums that can do absolute full sun. This I just chose to do the shade ones. It will get 12 to 14 inches uh, tall, and then the spacing minimum is 8 inches, maximum is 10. So we're going to use the Caribbean coral because it's got just beautiful colors of some pinks and greens and creams and kind of a like a dusty rose kind of color to it. Um, really kind of an antique color. I, I know that sounds weird, but there you go. Um, and then we have some of the Double Delight Primrose Begonias. I do not have any more of the Selenia Yellow. If I did, I would use them. But these are going to be very, very similar. They're behind in what the Selenia Yellows are, but these two will get massive, huge blooms on them and will be a mounded trailing habit to them. So I've got three of those to go in the Kinsman container. And then some infinity impatience these this is the infinity blushing crimson a beautiful impatient for the part shade to shade that will give me height in the kinsman container then we have white linen terrinia a beautiful trailer we've got two of those and then the a new introduction of the sweet potato vine and so this is a beautiful kind of a rich red really heavily serrated leaves on these gorgeous sweet potato vine that will be introduced next year so without further ado i am going to go ahead and get everything set up and we're going to start planting these containers for a shady back porch my friends so what I've done is I've got the two containers filled up with the compost and the potting soil right so the bottom one-third of your container is the compost and then the top two-thirds is your potting soil please I know that I get on my soapbox about this but use really nice high quality potting soil and compost you don't want to you know make the investment of having these beautiful plants like these gorgeous heart-to-heart -heart caladiums and then be chintzy and use really bad potting soil and your plants are going to suffer because just like if you constantly put junk food into your body you're not going to perform at your highest same thing with the plants so go ahead get some really good high quality potting soil and compost now we're going to start with the easiest container because i'm going to do what we call a monoculture and a monoculture um, is simply just a container that has multiples of the same plant in it, okay? So mono meaning one, culture, plant. I don't know if that's technical, but anyway, that's how it works in my brain. Mono one, culture, 
plant. So one plant, we have multiples of them. I am going to use three of these. This container is much smaller than the trough from Kinsman. This is probably um, 18 inches, 24 inches um, long, and then it is maybe 16, 14 to 16 inches deep this way. And so we're going to fill it up with just three of these gorgeous Caribbean coral caladiums. Now, they're going to grow and it's going to look like one big massive container, like one big massive plant. So that is the look that we are going for and by planting multiples of the same one, that is how we are going to achieve it. Now, if you have never grown caladiums before, especially if you live in a hot, humid part of the country, you need to go out and find you some caladiums today. They are the most fantastic, easiest, highest performing plants you will have in your garden. Because when you're like me, and you have a garden in the southeast of the United States, somewhere where it's really hot and humid, you get lots of rain, right? And our humidity, especially in the summer months, is absolutely out of the roof. I mean, our dew point at night, during the day, it is just, it never cools down. This is the conditions, these are those conditions that your caladiums are absolutely going to thrive in. In fact, they don't like temperatures or, it's not they don't like, but they want their temperatures to be at least 50 degrees or higher. So when you have cool nights or cool temperatures, your caladiums are not gonna grow. So if you live in an area that your nights get nice and cool and crisp, one, I'm very envious of that, and two, you may find that your caladiums are not going to um, perform as well as say they do for me. It is not that anything you're doing wrong, it's not that the caladium is bad, it's just that that may not be the best plant for you. You can probably grow a lot of plants that I cannot um, in my garden. So that is just where being a student of your own garden really comes into play. Now, see what I mean by easy? We just put three in there and I understand right now you may be like, well, that's not the most impressive thing that, you know, you know, step it up, Jenny, you can do a little bit better. Well, huh, let's talk about uh, six to eight weeks when this thing is absolutely magnificent and thriving in my shade, shady porch. When you're looking at your caladiums, make sure that you are getting the caladium that is appropriate for your growing conditions. Like I told you at the beginning, this is a strap leaf caladium that is going to be for the shade. Fancy caladiums are gonna be more sun loving. And I have done them, so in the Proven Winners line, the heart to heart line, they have multiple different varieties that on the tag will say sun to shade. And I have grown those caladiums in both full sun, just right here, you know, on the patio that gets sun up to sun down. And I have also grown that exact same caladium um, in the hanging baskets above that just get a little bit of sun or they get, you know, part sun areas. And then I have also grown them in underneath the forest pansy. So you might get some color variation, but if it says that it can do the sun, it truly can do the sun. And they're not really water hogs. They like, of course, consistent water, but they don't like to be saturated. If you just give them tons of water or they sit in a really wet area, then they could rot. And so you don't want that consistency. Um, and then once they're established, man, they are gorgeous. Okay, so like I said, Easy one, done, right here, monoculture. If you don't know what to do and you have a container and you want to do a container and you want it to be big and beautiful, but maybe putting plants together kind of freaks you out or it's just too much pressure or you just don't know what to do, pick one plant that you love, buy two, three, four, whatever size container you have and plant them that way. It will make a beautiful, beautiful statement. So going to put this in, in her final resting place and then I'm going to move this guy in front of me and then we're going to do a beautiful mixed container using the Kinsman Garden Com uh, Trough thing. Yeah, that. See you in a second.
All right, Miss B is ready to plant this container, and so we're going to have really fun doing this. It goes right in front of the window that's just off to the side of me right here. We're going to do a beautiful mixed arrangement that we're going to have the thriller, filler, and spiller aspect in it. Now, to tie all of this in together, because that is a huge um, design thought process that you're going to want to have, is that you want your spaces to tie in with each other. Not only do I want it to tie in with a container that I just did, so I'm going to use another one of the Caribbean Coral um, Caladiums, and we're just going to use one. This is going to be the back, okay? So this is going to go against the window, and then this will be the front and closest to you. So the Caribbean Coral is in there. We've got this one here, and then we've got a whole container over there ties the porch all in together. Next, we are going to use for some more of our thrillers, the Infinity Blushing Crimson Sun Patient. Now these will get 10 to 14 inches tall and my Caladium will get 12 to 14 inches tall. So basically they're gonna be of the same height here in the back. And I'm gonna give them some space and let them um, fill in the back here. So I've got three of them. Now, I am using this Infinity Impatient because here in the back I have the counterpart. It is the Sun Patient that is very similar in color. It's not the exact same color, but it is really similar. So we have it in the deck boxes. I'm also going to have some here in this flower bed right below me. So when you're at the patio, you will see them in the deck boxes. You will see them in the patio raised beds, and then you will see two of them here at this container right here. Again, ties the whole thing together. For my, this is where we're going to go in and we're going to figure this out together. Okay. So for my filler, Yep, for my filler, I had to think there for a second. Um, I'm trying to figure out, let's see, okay. I'm gonna use, this is where I use the primrose, the, the begonia, mm -hmm, the double delight primrose. Because it is a mounding trailer, I'm gonna go a little rogue here on you. I'm gonna put them more towards the corner, okay? So I've got two on the corner. They're gonna kinda come up and spill over. I think we're going to work backwards here because I want, well, maybe. Hmm. Okay, so then I'm going to put one in the center to be balanced, I think. The white linen, Catalina white linen, Terenia, is going to go in the front. You know what? I think I'm going to take this one out. That's going to throw me off. It's going to get too big. So, okay. So the Catalina, this is real-time gardening here, folks. This is how professionals really do it. All right, so the Catalina is right here in the center of like flanking the Caladium rather. And then in front of the Caladium, we're gonna do one sweet potato vine. <laughs> in this container, we only need one sweet potato vine because um, the one, this is a test plant, so I don't know the exact vigor on this baby, uh, but historically sweet potato vines can be very vigorous. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. Yep, there we go. Thrillers in the back. Two Infinity Blushing Crimson Impatient. Then we have the Caribbean Coral Caladium. So this will all get to be basically the same height. On each side, we have the Double Delight Primrose Begonias that will mound and trail over. Big, huge, fat, soft yellow flowers on them that mimic the hanging baskets and the deck boxes behind me. So that all ties in together. And then the Catalina White Linen Terenia is gonna kind of fill in and spill over as well. The Catalina White Terenia is going to go in the flower bed behind me, um, kind of off to the side, right here in front of the deck boxes that have the Blue Chiffon Rose of Sharon and the two David Alsons. That's gonna be my, my ground cover. Um, so that's what we're gonna use there. So that all ties in. And then the Sweet Potato Vine, um, yeah, it's rogue. <laughs> It just brings in the color. So I'm going to plot these into the soil, top dress with my compost, uh, get everybody in place, get everybody nice and watered, clean up my whole mess. You know, just the things that we gardeners do. Just get everybody tucked in and happy in their new home and get it all cleaned up. And then I'll meet you back here and we'll highlight and show how everything ties together on the whole back porch here.
right, my friends, so today's project is complete. Give you a little perspective here of how everything looks. I try to do it from the different angles. It's really hard to kind of film in a, in a closed back porch. So I am standing here on the deck, right? Deck, patio, here is the back porch. So this gives you the perspective of how everything looks right there. And then I think one of my teenage children is coming. Ah, they decided to close the door. There you go. Um, so we have the beautiful Kinsman trough right here in front of this window. Our windows are very low. So that's why I love this trough is because it's right at the height of the window. When you're standing inside, obviously you're looking, you know, up, but if you're sitting down, you can still see over this container. Just fits this space perfectly. I believe this trough comes in different sizes. So you just go explore the Kinsman um, website and see which one fits your space the best. This one fit me, uh, but I do love, love, love this. Now, the sun on this guy. So this, the sun will set over here. So this corner will get some good sun, but only maybe for like an hour or so. Obviously with this being underneath the porch, the only way this is going to get watered is if I water it. Um, so we, it makes it easy because it's right here on the back porch and I have a hose. So that's super easy to get to. And then of course our rocking chairs, everybody asks where we get our rocking chairs. I order them online from Sam's club. So you can check those out. And then over here tucked in the corner is the trough of the caladiums. This is that Caribbean coral and it will get nice and full. It will fill in this entire area right here because this is a very small little nook. It's a little corner. We do not use this door. Uh, I have a Norfolk pine. People will ask if I have a, a Christmas tree in there. No, it's just a Norfolk pine with some lights on it, but this door we do not go in and out of. So that's why I can put it right here fits perfectly in this space uh, because we do have another door right over here that that is the door that we go in and out of the house um, from the patio but just kind of gives you an idea of this overall space um, as we pan back here to me we spend a ton of time back here especially um, since we have gotten the patio finished and it's just it's really really nice back here because we do have great shade on this back porch in the summertime normally we sit on the front porch in the morning and then on the back porch in the afternoon but just creating that space uh, that you want to enjoy gives you some peace and quiet that is what it is about creating the garden that you want for your space in your area. So I hope you have found this um, helpful with some ideas on containers for the shade, because again, what the, the monoculture basket of just the caladiums will never get direct sun on it. It only gets really bright, bright light on sunny days, um, but never any direct sun and things really thrive there quite well. So. Hope this has been fun, informative, and inspirational. And as always, thanks so much for joining with Creekside. Y'all have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.